Hello everyone, this is Zeros Trivia, and today we're starting a brand new Total War 3 Kingdoms Let's Play featuring Liu Bei, as we'll be doing a 190 start with quite a few mods. There are 11 mods which are listed here with their proper load order for those who are interested in trying this out for yourself. And the main feature of this group of mod is going to be the Trom Overhaul mod and the Trom Warlord sub mod which we have previously played for one of our bounty challenge campaigns using Yuan Shu. And this is quite an interesting collection of mod in strengthening AI recruitment and offering a refreshing change to the balance of the game, even on romance mode, as the generals will be all toned back and the units will get the spotlight here. So we'll jump in here. There's quite a few artwork mod as well, so we'll have a lot of different unique characters. MTU is built into Trom, even though the character bonuses are changed, obviously because we want to weaken romance generals. And the one unique thing we're going to do here with the base faction is the event mod allows us to teleport magically into the Shu lands on turn one. So we'll be building our kingdom of Shu from the very beginning and we'll try to see how this experience will change the end game, which also has a special feature with the Warlord mod, which allows the AI kingdoms to sort of confederate all the smaller factions so that we have these three superpowers dishing it out at the very end. So looking forward to all of this, and we'll be hopping into a campaign using our typical settings. We'll be playing on Legendary Legendary 40 Minute, and China must be united. Luoyang 然天下人黄金猖獗匪盗横行Alrighty, we got our nice faction intro flyby, and this is the event. We can leave to Shu to lead the people of Shu instead of follow the storyline, and we'll do just that, as you'll see we'll disappear from here. Like Emperor Gaozu Liu Bang, the founding emperor of the Han Dynasty, who made his fortune in Shu and Guanzhong, your bloodline tells you to go to Shu and follow his story. Like Liu Bang, you can conquer the China, that's weird translation, from Shu, or Shu can be your jail. It is on your hands now. So I think the translation mod, I think the Tra mod was originally, or I actually don't know which mod, I believe it's originally made in Korean and then is translated to English. So that explains some of the slightly weird translation. But we'll basically get our early missions voided. So they'll be issued and then aborted, issued and aborted, issued and aborted, and so forth. And this is the option to have the Warlord mod endgame confirmed. Essentially, the AI main factions will confederate pretty much all the minor factions so that we have some powerful factions to fight. Although, personally, in terms of difficulty, I actually think having a vassal network is a lot more difficult to fight into because of army caps. So if you have a big faction with eight vassals, for example, you're dealing with a lot more armies, even though the quality of those armies will suffer, but it is just much harder to deal with the sheer number. But we'll try this out. So we'll enable this function and we'll have three big superpowers at the end. As you can see, we faded away and we're actually not doing this because we're not here anymore. And if we just turn the map to the north and hop over here, we appeared magically at Jiangzhou, and we'll be taking this Han Empire territory in the beginning. 
Now we have a decent starting army. We could actually take a different settlement if we really wanted to. Uh, we have Jiangyang, commander to our south, or technically our west, and currently it's owned by some Nanman faction. Wu Tugu would have the main capital. We could also conquer that and make it our sort of capital, but I have high hopes of uh, conquering the Nanman troops when they get stronger to pick up some elephants and whatnot. So we'll leave them alone for now, and we'll just pick up this territory here. As you can see, the units are going to be very different with the mod. We have Oath Fellows, and there are Veteran Militia Cavalry, Bu Chu of the Left General, uh, all sorts of things that are not in the base game. And you can see the symbol for one, two, and there's also a three, which is just three lines, simplify Chinese characters. And they are tiers for the unit in this mod. So tier one unit, tier two unit, and the best unit are going to be tier three. Bu uh, Chu, which just means retinue, is mostly the tier 2 unit, and the militia tier is mostly the tier 1 unit. Uh, pretty easy to understand, and once we do get access to recruitment on turn 2, we'll take a look at the whole unit list. Liu Bei finally gets some, you know, legit faction unique unit, even though it's not the best. I think with this mod, there are some factions that get a lot cooler unit. But for example, the Oath Fellow is something that's available to us. And that's actually available because we have this sort of uh, additional uh, skill tree. I mean, Oath Fellows, the Oath of the Peach Garden, the Three Brothers, this is why we have them. And you can take a look at some of the bonuses. Most of this is the same as the base game, but abilities have been changed. So Unyielding Earth, uh, they took away pretty much all the Unbreakable. You don't have Unbreakable on Meditation. Uh, you also have changes to his special ability, Inspiring Word, and we also have this passive infinite range ally boost, which is actually quite good. And we'll look forward to getting that. There are also changes to redeployment costs benefit. So instead of having like 25% chunk, it's only 4% here. And faction support's the same, assignment's the same, starting rank's the same. So the positioning is still the same. We get some additional abilities on the bottom that you can also choose. Uh, we already start out with two of them, so some cheap upkeep for Liu Bei and some increased melee damage for melee cavalry. Uh, there's also no longer high uh, melee block chance on melee cavalry. There's also no 50% missile resistant. This one in particular actually has some ranged weapons as well, so it'd be pretty interesting. There's a lot of things to get used to, and we'll definitely take a look at everything as we uh, get to it. Let's see what items we pick up. Wow. What a haul. Lucky us. So water clock, obviously very good for replenishment purposes. Tax collector. I mean, when we get a administrator, these two would be okay. Uh, peasantry income is actually quite good because of our tax building. Battle axe, not needed for Dobe in particular because our generals start out with some very good weapons. Uh, the Shuang Gu Jian for Liu Bei, uh, the Serpent Spear for Zhang Fei, and Guan Yu still has Crescent a uh, green crescent, a uh, green dragon crescent blade. It's a mouthful translating that. God of War is still here. Damage nerf to 15k only from 38k. Unstoppable is pretty similar. He does become unbreakable. There is an infinite healing on this. Um, this is actually super strong as long as he's winning and his health is above 50%. So he does have to be in combat to activate this. You pretty much want to send him into some weak enemy unit so that you have the winning status and then the healing kicks in. Once you dip below 50%, this goes away though. Uh, we have bonus in duels. I believe you can duel once you go over a certain amount of stats. I think 100 points. I forgot which stat, or is it basically any stat? I'm not so sure about that. I think strategists still can't duel. Um, but we'll basically explore all these changes. There's too many on the mod. It's a huge overhaul of the game for me to actually just know everything. And I have not tried this mod that much, even though it is quite interesting. Uh, you can see the Oath Fellows being unlocked through their bottom tier, I guess, skills here. All right, enough said, let's fight. We don't need to give them many items, except for the Water Clock. Maybe you want to change the leading general? Guan Yu can pick up Unstoppable, Guan Yu can give us some replenishment. Liu Bei doesn't need level ups, technically. Zhang Fei, did they change his roar? 
20 morale. It gets three uses, but only 20 morale. Uh, pretty painful change. The 100 is actually quite a lot of fun. And I'm guessing that's a, that's a translation thing? Or how do we get levels in this? Also, max rank, I think, goes to 15, which is why we can pick up more skills. Uh, I think we just like when we leave this army, we end up with the uh, replenishment bonus. The reach no longer gives movement. I think it's now on mobility. Yeah. Which Guan Yu can pick up soon too. So, well, like Guan Yu lead, he gets extra experience, and we're very sorry for Fan Min. We just magically teleported here, and we're gonna go wipe him out. Uh, we'll fight this to show off some of the units. I think the goal is going to be to first establish ourselves here, take some of the free Han territory, pick up the weapon and armor smith, and then slowly take Chengdu. We'll spend some money later on to uh, move our capital. Although having a port city early on is not bad, we can essentially trade better, even though there are some shallows blocking us. Um, we don't like the towers, but what can we do? I think siege weapons tied to rank, so we can't recruit like tribuches early on. I think a frontal assault is actually fine. And yeah, we'll just start here. Take a look. He cannot duel. He doesn't have enough s skill points. His attributes not high enough, even though he's a commander. So like Liu Bei can duel because his stats is high enough. Um, so we don't have any splash ability, and most units don't have that high of uh, range block chance. So marching into these towers is going to hurt. We don't really have to worry about the two archers here, so it's just clump a unit here. Just trying to figure out a way to approach this without losing too many units. Let's group what we have first. Pretty sure we're going to send these boys in since they do have a shield. Uh, the unit cards also change a little bit. There's more information on it. You can see the bonus damage to infantry or cavalry. Uh, there is now a melee evasion system uh, that's kind of different from the base game, where your melee hit bonus takes away the enemy melee evasion, whereas previously this is not really a stat, um, or at least it's hidden, and now you can kind of have more experienced troop take away more evasion. So combat technically should go a little faster. All right, we are going to... Hmm, I figure we pick up a free gate. Get inside first. Logging that doesn't really benefit us. Then we'll bring the generals. Even though they obviously are not going to have the huge splash damage, they're still decently strong. Call them three so we can find them. Track after. I wonder if Troy, uh, Trom, not Troy, uh, nerf the tower damage because it is definitely very annoying. I'm gonna zigzag our way in. I haven't get gotten hit yet, so that's. Pretty nice. We just need a nice consistent way of getting in with our units. Probably not going to end up using these. Oh, we dismounted. My bad. There we go. Alright, we'll take control of this. Now they're behind the barricade, which is kind of annoying. But if they leave. Alright, we're gonna have to circle around. I'm going to just go there and take care of him. If he wants to fight us, or, you know, we can push for that fight.
Yep, we have our shield. It should be okay for now. Throw the cavalry unit in as well. We don't need to take these towers. Yeah, he should be an easy kill. We want to clear some space for our range unit to kind of hit their infantry. Looks like their general's going down pretty quickly. Well, you finally made it. Chase them off. Alright, he's gonna route. Alright, gonna pull back. There's one group here that's a little bit annoying. And we well, might need to take that. Can we have one chop chop? Try to break that for us. Fighting under tower is no fun. Can't capture with him standing on it. Our range is rather limited. Okay, we're gonna go back. You're 71, not 50. Alright, we're going to take this first. Alright, they're going to break the barricade, hopefully. And then we'll send the generals to go take care of the two archers. Othorn has an ability where we need to have a friendly with the ability here, right? Yep, so let's put two of them here. They got firewall move. They look like they have firewall move. I mean, I, I guess they're kind of like E-archers here. We capture that? Yes, we have. Chase this. Let's just hit the one without the, the shields. Mm, can't deal with that one archer there. them down a little bit. Why is going to keep losing his target? Alright, cavalry's out of ammo. It's okay. Is it me or he's just not attacking very much? There we go. The stairs. I think was confusing him. Alright, we'll send two. You wanna come fight? Please do. Alright, then we'll help take that down. I think if I dismount one, we, we actually would kill faster here. Or not. 
He just looks very stuck. Okay, okay, okay. Or not. He's having targeting issues. Okay, he's back to normal now, I think. Alright, take this. Go attack that. Alright, we're just gonna force it through this. Have the cavalry chase this down. Alright, everyone, first capture this real quick, please. Now, I will just ignore the tower damage real quick, just route the rest, and we should be fine. Just their captain. Generals are still decently strong, they just don't have the splash damage to instantly delete a unit. I mean, they're at least the fast cavalry single entity. Alright, not too much damage. We probably get rid of some of the units. I don't think we need to keep this many militia. We're not going to be in a lot of wars in the Shu land. And once we have territory, we can kind of see what, who we can trade with and what we can do diplomatically. We still lose Imperial favor, but it's not going to really hurt us that much until the Emperor comes of age. Alright, Liu Bei basically just gets some free experience. He's rank 4. Okay, we get 2 points. So, let's see what we need. Faction-wide bonus? Not really. I want to get him the ability here. We're just going to fly through the top. Alright, we don't need this. Let's see if they change our tax building. Yeah, it's not free anymore. We have to pay money to build it. But there is no public order issue with the building chain, so that's still good. There's also changes to State Workshop where they changed the corruption reduction amount to a lot less. Uh, the income figure is also reduced, I believe, a little bit. But uh, we probably still would go for it. Obviously, it's not as good as like 15%, but whatever little bit we can scrap together is still very important. I don't think they changed anything with that. They took away grain. <laughs> they put that on. There, there's micro buildings on the counties now. So grain storage went to something else. Uh, you can also get some interesting ones in certain locations that are relevant. So like the Tiang land, you can get some town recruitment from the minor county buildings. And we'll definitely take a look at that. Uh, in buildings, still pretty similar. Market Wharf, still the same. Just making sure nothing has been, you know, major overhauled before we go for something. That looks still the same. Alright, the palace is still there. 
this would be like a really high corruption re reduction, but I don't think we're going down the yellow reform path. We'll take that away and we'll build this. Even if it costs money, it's still a pretty good income building chain. And we'll definitely pick up the bonus. Uh, militia replenishment is also quite good. And this is a uh, sort of farming, so peasantry income, a little bit of commerce income would be good enough for this area. Uh, we have Jian Yong as our only other character right now. Jian Yong also starts out with a good weapon thanks to MTU part of the, mo uh, the mod. Yep, and we get some campaign movement from his weapon, which should have us uh, does not have a set bonus. Okay, minus one construction time and plus one public order, not major bonuses. Calm down, temper deflection, swift steps. He also can get Oath Fellows. Interesting. City expansion. So I think we put him as a Simon character for now. We could use some discount on construction cost for sure. And we'll wait till he comes on duty before we apply that small city. Yeah, well upgrade this once we get the discount kicked in and that's pretty much everything we can do on turn one except for diplomacy let's see if we can get some trade deals we only have one trade partner available we have land borders with Liu Yan and uh, Jia Long hmm. Jia Long's a minor faction like I said I'm probably going to expand towards the Han territories first I really want that weaponsmith so we don't have to go to war with either of them and if we get a positive value, we'll take it and see what we can get for items on turn one. Not a bad item, but not something we desperately would need. Uh, we do have the option for unify on turn one, and you can actually cheese this and unify with him on turn one because of the 50 points. If you make him your best friend by promising him per turn payments until he has 150 attitude with you then the confederation value or the opinion on the idea the negative factor would drop down to negative 50 which is the baseline and since our current military is better than his above 50 points he would actually agree to this and we can get a confederation on turn one this is one of you uh, Adobe's unique faction mechanics with the unification um basically kind of his thing with the unity points on top of that uh, we'll build this up pretty quickly, I'm pretty sure. We just need to keep fighting, and the High Empire shouldn't be a tough opponent. Let's make sure we have the Water Clock for better replenishment. And if we are going to recruit, we probably want to have more Instinct Points. Oh, they changed it, right. So it's no longer the same as the base game where you get Recruitment Discount on Instinct. As a matter of fact, I don't think there's a recruitment discount on any of the stats now. Okay. I think we can say goodbye to some of the militia unit. Even though they do synergize decently well with the extra replenishment we can get from our tax collection building. But these are also militia and they're going to be more useful. I think we keep the archers. I think archers have pretty high value with the mod, with the changes to range block chance. Oath fellows are expensive, 70 upkeep per unit compared to like everything else. I mean, Nube has discounts, so I guess that's why it's lower. 27, okay. Um, having Zhongfei recruit an archer feels kind of bad. I think even though I like militia archers, we're going to get rid of them. Alright, should save us some money and we're going to convert that to some buildings next turn. We didn't do this, got distracted, and so, uh, we deleted our unit. I thought I did it. We have a lot of food, actually. If we really want to get some payment, we can maybe offer like two food. It's not a lot. I'm going to just keep the food and just sign deal. Looking at how much he was willing to pay, that 0.6, we probably wouldn't have gotten anything for it unless we gave him one food. So I, I don't think we lost too much. But yeah, definitely do your deals before you delete your units. That, that should be it. I don't think we have anything else on our hand. 
If they want to declare war with us, then they can die. I think we hop into the water and we go for that. Ladon will also be a pretty interesting pickup, but I'm not sure we want to go that way first. I think we want to pick up the Shu territories. I think we have enough to take the Weaponsmith. I don't think there's anyone there. I hope Wutugu doesn't declare war on us. That would be pretty tragic. Alright, look like we're still considered in territory, so we'll still get the replenishment. We'll let that be. We'll pick up the tax collection building. Nice and discounted. And I don't think we have much to do in these early turns as we're building up in the middle of nowhere, technically. Yep. We'll just go hunt down our weaponsmith. And we'll come back and pick up the farm to complete this. Alright, military supply with winter, it's gonna hurt, but uh, we'll probably end up going on march here. Yeah, they have a very small army. Alright, looks like our military supply is probably gonna hold. Yeah, I think we're just gonna upgrade that. I don't think we have diplomatic vision of Cao Cao, so he doesn't have diplomatic vision of us. Therefore, we don't have to worry about getting schemed, which is such a blessing. Uh, he wants the battle axe and money for... Nope, you can go to war with us. We're not betraying them. They didn't invite us here. We, we teleported here. I don't think the High Empire is aggressive, and even if that army is, not so scared. Guan Ping, she's the first one to spawn. Now these are all pre-programmed events. We'll have the whole crew. Chen Gong is available. Hmm. I'm gonna have to pass. I mean, he left dissatisfied. That is pretty reasonable. We don't have a strategist right now, but we also don't have another army slot. So I'm going to keep the three brothers together for the most part. Yeah, I, I think we're going to just hold off on that. I don't think we can reach them. An attack. We can also use our unity point to uh, pick up Han territory because we just disembarked. Um, it's going to kill our movement this turn. Looks like we're going to bleed through the last bit of our supplies and we will be suffering attrition soon, but I think we'll be okay. All right. How many turns? Three turns. Okay, we can still use him. Pick up some reforms. Now, does this mod give us a pair reform each year, or do we get only one? We're starting out here, which is not that useful. I think we want to actually pick up the next tier of the tax building. We get two. Okay, excellent. Do we just pick up all the tiers of the tax building first? That depends on the building requirement. Do we have to be like a small city? We do. Okay, so that got to pick up that news. 
Hmm, so maybe not that right away. We can see if anyone wants to trade with us. It would be Liu Yan, but I think we're too weak to force that diplomatic deal. Administrators would be good, actually. We can get an extra army count, and we can get some discount on the... Ooh. So Guan Yu will only get 4%. If we pull... Yeah, you want out, we can get 6%. It's not high. As you can notice here, it's not that high. So it's better he's on assignment. And I put maybe Guan Yu there and we get like 20% peasantry from him. And then another 10% from this. I think that's better. So we're going to throw Guan Yu into that position. We will have to pay for it, but uh, I think it's worth it. So we got our reforms through. Can't cancel this now. We've got to turn on it. But our next building is going to be slightly cheaper. Just slightly. Everything is kind of tweaked. So the numbers aren't that big. All right, they backed off. We don't even have to worry about if they're attacking or not. All right, Tianyu leveled up. I think... I don't know what city expansion does. I'm curious, but not that curious. It's not going to be a key battle general. I think he might end up still as administrator in the future. All right, let's see what city expansion does. I think we can fight this one. Guantianxiao They have one cavalry unit, if I'm not mistaken. Where does this path lead to? Oh, the weapon workshops. Yeah, the map is great. Alright, they have 160 range, 160 range. We actually slightly outrange them. These are strategists. We're just gonna charge right in. Enemy cavalry could be a little bit annoying. I want to kind of shoot at it. And we'll, our goal is just to distract the two archer units so they can't really shoot at our guys as they close the gap. And we'll get right out. We don't want to get stuck here. Shoot at this particular one. Actually, can we shoot at this guy? You're gonna get charged. Nope. You're gonna charge us, which is good. Alright, why don't you get on top of that? You get on top of that. Alright, 
Yeah, we'll let our archers shoot at this. I don't think we get a chance. Yeah, make sure their archers can't shoot. And I think our oath fellow is going to beat the militias in combat. Obviously, their unit's a little bit stronger. It's a tier 2 unit, but Liu Bei should be able to wipe it out. Ooh, they get a little flank on us. Hurry up and route something. If they bounce back, I can send it against one of the archers. There we go. We got rid of them. Liu Bei should stick on them. Ooh. Captain is killing this unit here. Hmm. It's the shots that's being fired from this. Control your guy, Guan Yu. Are right, he's back? Hmm, this fight's not going as well as we wanted to. Let's see if we can route one side. There we go. I think we want to obey back. I'm gonna dismount him to kill the general. the militia first. Just to cover them on their approach. And then Zhang Fei can dive back. All right, we're going to get the chain route. Wasn't as smooth as we imagined, but got through it. Got to reevaluate the strength of our Oath Fellows. Maybe we need more of them. I think that's probably the solution. They still kill the bunch. They're kind of glass cannon type of high damage melee infantry. Alright, hopefully the weapons flow in. Um, we don't really need much here. I think we just want to upgrade it to produce better gear. We we'll invest the money there. We should be able to bounce back soon, hopefully. Both fellows. Yeah, it's high damage. Um, let's see, what we counter? Cavalry. So they're kind of a poor arm unit, actually. Not really anti infantry here. We'll choose spearmen. Cavalry. We'll get a few more cavalry on Zhang Fei. We'll get some archers on Liu Bei here. Not right now. We need some supplies, or else we're just not replenishing. It's not going to work out. All right, we need to level this up, and it's time to reset him. Nope, oh, misclick. We don't really need to take bottom right now. I think we just finished this and we're probably going to build up a force and start dealing with Liu Zhang. I don't want to pay. Eventually, we're going to have to go to war with them as well, so. Just a matter of time.
Do we have some supplies? Yep, it's bouncing back. We need to wait at least this next turn before we can start recruiting, or else the attrition is just not going to be worth it. Arguably, maybe we should just recruit new ones. The only unit I think we can't recruit... Oh, we can recruit that again as well. I'm not sure if I want that. Yeah, I think I should have disbanded them last turn. We might spark some war because AI might think that we are just terribly weak. Now I think about it, we should actually just recall them and some of them here. Because we don't need this right now, that's just farm farm food. Leave that alone and be prepared for a real fight. Alright, and we'll just summon them right back over here. Sounds good. Nobody wants you. I'm still not sure if I want that to be my first strategist. It's not a bad choice. Cost us a thousand. We're not exactly loaded. And I don't want to split them up, even if we could get a strategist. So, no. No one declares war this turn. It would be excellent. We look good. None of my factions didn't buy either. Is I try to retake this? Do I have to resummon the Obey Going Jumpy here? Prefer not to, but that's what it looks like. So why not go back to your dad? Why did you show up in my recruitment pool? Nothing special, I don't think we'll take him. Oh, if he wasn't so old. Lu Kang, this is uh, Lu Xun's grand uncle. Well, well, uh, he he doesn't die to Sun Ce per se. He dies of old age, but he fights Sun Ce before he dies of old age. Inner vitality. So he has to fight for 24 seconds and he start healing. Not a huge heal, but it's decent, I guess. Spear infantry specialist. Yeah, if he was younger, this would be interesting, but he, he's just not. 65 is too old. Even with the mods, it, it's too much. Alright, nobody picked up another level. We're just gunning for the weight on the sh uh, sh shoulders. I'm not going to recruit. I don't want to recruit here. I want to recruit here. I just want to defend against that. And then we'll, we'll shift ourselves back over here. Please attack us so that we don't have to worry about you anymore. Or stand still so I can fight you. Attack. Uh. Well, if the garrison replenishes and it upgrades so it has a bigger garrison, I think we can leave. So then dies. Alright, Guan Yu picks up a rank. I think we just take Unstoppable. Hmm. Minus four morale when attacking, basically. That's that's not bad. Maybe better than this kind of inconsistent trigger, unstoppable. Campaign movement? Hmm. Let's pick up the movement first. 
We did get the tier two and they will have at least two more turns of replenishing. And with the full stack here, I think we can beat them. So we're going to shuffle right on back. We need the artisan, which takes a while. None of, the, none of these bonuses are relevant for what this does, so we are not going to spend money on it. Yeah, we're fine. I'm not going to get any diplomatic deals with no army. So we'll just skip over that. It'd be funny if he shows back up. No, good luck with you and Cao Cao. We have abandoned you. Oh, bigger army, but I don't know if he's coming over here. Maybe he's just going to defend Badong. They'll try and event. Zhang Bao. Uh, these birth are too early. Historically speaking. But uh, I don't mind getting them to join us through the fight. This is a bandit character. Pass. All right, with one turn left, this is where Jian Yong goes back in. Now we can maybe plan for some military related ones. Minus five recruitment costs, for example. Yeah, aside from that, maybe we just pick this up, just this. Better replenishment, better melee evasion from Lusha unit. Sounds interesting. Not really gonna go for trade just because I don't think we can get a trade partner until we kind of beat everyone here and have land routes outside. That's not bad. All right, time to give ourselves a real army. Zhao Fei is so underleveled. We have 8k in our pocket. We need 600 to upgrade this. I think we have a not a full army, but a semi-full army. Nobe will be a few archers. All right, the ammo is a significant upgrade, and the melee damage is also a significant upgrade, and health. So these these are good. These are basically archers. They just have a new fancy name. Hopefully, we'll get ourselves some cavalry, which are too expensive. I was thinking of getting some frontline unit, but our income has tanked quite a bit. We get two of these. And then also two of these. We can't afford four cavalry, unfortunately. Alright, we're still net positive. We'll have to make our money through battle. But this is fine. It's an army that we can use. Okay, so he's not harassing us anymore. He's just moving around. That's fine. I think we attack Utugu first. It's kind of the natural expansion. And if he's not home, we can just pick this off, then his faction gets wiped. I'm pretty sure that's how he works. It's a faction leader item. Oh, we had one. I forgot to give it to him. Alright, we really don't want an empty slot. Now, 
economic building discounts. So we actually make the state workshop cheaper. I do think we want to build this first. It's pretty efficient. 40 increase for 500. All right, we're not going to get a 15% discount until this tier. Okay. So we'll just get that. It's active. Two more turns. Yeah, everyone still think we're too weak, so we're not going to get much from that. No. Oh, looks like we got this during the end turn. Alright, Dongzhou is already dead. Didn't even have to do anything. Alright, one more turn. Get this upgraded. We're currently at zero food. This should also have a port, so that should be fine. It's a Numan settlement. So no walls there ever. We pretty much spent all our cash, but it's a slow start. Have to build things from scratch. Dongzhou is dead. Domain takes over. And we didn't pick up a second trade route because I don't want to trade with him because I want to go to war with him. Ooh. Roar of the Beast, which is... Like, Zhang Fei got nerfed so much that it's pretty much this ver slightly better version of this Roar of the Beast. He has a lot of built-in satisfaction mechanic. He's young. I just don't think we need another Cavalry General, given that we can't afford Cavalry units. This is the better deal. Three turns, so recall him, reset him up. A second water clock. All right, now we move. We're going to just blatantly trespass because, you know, Neman doesn't have authority here. Bunch of infantry, decent garrison forces. Why does he have two separate groups? Ah, OK, it's from the building. Not a weak group, but uh, I think we will force the fight. It's a shame he didn't leave. Oh, he leveled up to level 3 for us. This is excellent. That way we don't have to spend the money to do that. Oh, he's attacking them. All right, Laba Festival. We can't increase the tax yet. Can't take advantage of that. We have a third merchant. What is going on? You know, unfortunately, there is no option to join the war for him where he pays us. What if we sit here, since 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 they are at war, wouldn't they be? Wouldn't he march out to fight him? Yeah, we can reduce the amount of supply we lose if we stay in the water, and we can also maybe sneak over here and grab Tuan's territory if he's not home. Is he home? Can't see. Looks like he's not home. That might be a better target. We wait for him to go attack, and then he weakens them for us, and then we take his territory from behind.
Yes, our version of Dobe also has no honor. Oh, oh yeah, we no. Oh, that's cheating. That's cheating. We can't fight this. Don't catch us. Don't catch us. This is nonsense. Okay, so... That's brutal. That's a brutal start. I don't think anyone died. Fingers crossed. Injury traits, I guess. Okay. Nobody didn't pick up one. Only Guan Yu. All right. What's this level four replenishment in foreign land? That's where I'm really curious about that one. Splash damage. And we're pretty desperate for splash damage. So our big mighty army got creamed. Hmm. We have to save up about 5,000 to get them back on the field. 5,450. So two turns. It's a real bummer. All right, we'll get the tier four and the tier five, I guess. This is sort of our early game economy. Yeah. Hmm, that war declaration. Brutal. We have walls. If he comes, Guan Yu is defending. So it's. Oh, are they. F oh, Liu Yan killed them. I see a flag change. We lost our trade partner. We trade with you. 7.2. Well, we have a lot of food. No, we don't. Uh, we have items. We have some very good items. We have endless amount of merchants. And it seems like we picked up some new stuff. One point seven. Okay, it's doable. We can secure a trade deal with them first. I guess we have to pay for it. Uh, it's bugging out. It's okay. We just gotta do this and this. How much would they want for this? Too much. Let's give him two merchants because we only need one. We'll throw in the point five for free because we can't get anything else from this. Even if this is like four. Yep. All right. So he's not going to attack us, hopefully. Next turn, we'll have enough money to summon the army. And our income went up a little with this new trade deal. So we can potentially... Maybe add a few more unit. They just let us fight that battle. We could have beaten them. But I was trying to get sneaky and attack to one. Completely backfired. At least no one got executed, no one got captured. Could have been worse. Ah, got chased out in the Civil War.
honestly not terrible if we can just throw him in as a administrator in the future. I think he's worth grabbing. Although if we pay for him, we can't summon the army this turn. He should still be there next turn. Oh, we don't have money next turn. Okay, we wait one more turn. We, we get him onto our side first. Like he would be a pretty good administrator here after we pick it up. Free peace deal. If we throw in something, could we get paid? Like, how much can we get for... Like, we're not going to use this. Yeah, we could use the money. Alright, we can just focus on King Wutugu, get our revenge for being embarrassed in the river. Hi! Alright, Taltian's war is starting. You're back! Again! So what's up? What are you guys doing? Can I make you the administrator now? That I feel like we should sneak the army over. I can put Guan Yu here. It wouldn't be the greatest thing in the world, but it wouldn't hurt his satisfaction. We pay a hundred extra in salary and then we put Guo Si as the administrator. And then we wouldn't have to defend it. Why can't I select it? There we go. He has decent income. We just gotta move one of the items over. From going, yeah, they they disappear like that. It's a little bug. Let us have this. We'll take a little extra expertise and. 4% same as Guan Yu, so that's that's fine. And he also has 20% from peasantry. We're not gonna miss a beat. And this is gonna be totally defensible. Now about sneaking behind him. Guan Yu is not available till the next turn. So I, I might wait one more turn just to sync up the units. He might go sneak this, but if he does, we just wipe him out by taking his home. His only option is to siege us. No. Oh, he's going. Two, three, four, okay. Two, one, three turns, I think. The Thai clan got wiped, and they're willing to come join us. Depends on what items they're bringing to the table here. Former faction leader, just for the item, he's worth recruiting. Although we might kick him. We, we just don't really need him. And I think we actually want to kick him with a banish for cash. We can deal with the minus five. Alright, get two cavalry. 
we pick up a bit more frontline units. It doesn't have to be that they both counter cavalry. Mm, already negative income after the cavalry units. Let's not let's not change it. Yeah, still three turns, but we can start moving after one, I think. Just so that we beat him to that. He needs one, two, three turns, I think. And if we lose it, not the end of the world. We can trick him. We can trade it to someone so he can't take it. And then we take it out and then eventually we get it back. All right, hopefully that boost will give us enough money to not be negative. Yeah, watch him commit. And then we're getting traded away. Got another armor. This is the weaponsmith. Where? Oh no, the armor is from the item we stripped from Taimal. But like, where's the weapons? It'd be nice if we get one weapon and then we trade it away. Yep, he lands. I think he takes him two turns to get there. What? What? Yuan Shu killed him? I mean, AI spams a lot of armies in this game. With the mods. Uh, we don't need that corruption reduction. We don't have land. We can get replenishment boost into more replenishment boost. We do have ports, so it's not complete useless. Yeah, I think it's time to grab this. We get two. Not sure what we want. Hmm. Salary reduction sounds like an easy profit. Give up 10%. End the turn here. I want to say he can't make it in one turn, but I might I might be wrong. Fourteen point five. How much is your farm worth? Ah, that's not a bad swap. We complete our province. He's still going to be busy over here. I don't think we can get some money, though. All right, we'll take it. Surprise. And then we can use, use Unity to pick it back up without going to war, I think. So it's all good. All right, then we can sit here for at least one more turn, I think. At least three stacks. I'm still shocked Liu Bell died. Can't increase tax, unfortunately. Alright, we're close. 
All right, time to move. Of course he has another army, but much smaller. Ah, uh, we forgot to reset him. Uh, we might wait a turn. He has a fourth army, unless he switched commanders. It was too quick, I didn't know what exactly happened. Alright, we get our revenge. And, uh, yeah, given the ratio... Ooh. Well, they're not done replenishing. We're just going to delegate this. Oh, Yun joins! We still get this event even though he's not anywhere close. Du Ji is in Shangyong. Xun Yu is in Ba Dong. What happened? They just randomly get assigned Han territories. Interesting. Right. Uh, so we picked up Zhao Yun. We didn't get any cool units. Oh, Wu Huan Cavalry from Gong Sun Zan's faction. Got some items. Okay. Uh, we are going to start planning for a second army. We're going to need to pick up some generals for that. We'll take a look at who's available. And uh, we are going to need them to take on this entire group. But I think the easy target now is just take on the Nemen tribe. Complete Jiangyang as a commandery. Pick up some copper. Uh, the Lumbiard will give us a little bit of income. And then we can turn on them after we build up our strength. Because right now our economy just can't afford things. And that's a problem. So we'll see what we will do from here next time. Picked up some land. And we can move Guan Yu to a minister to position once we unlock that. Our prestige situation, not going fast, but... If we can get the unity building up, we can pick up the second administrator and also eventually get the prestige to rank up. So that's where we're at. Rough start, but we bounce back. So until next time, bye.